or whether it was non-Christians, people that I knew before. I mean, I was at college when I got saved. I was 18 years old, had a lot of friends. And so I was just enthusing to them about all the things that were, oh, I read this in the Bible and you know I was praying and so on. I had no real concept of uh, casting your pearls before swine. So I was just telling them everything that was happening. I say, oh, I had a great time in prayer, you know, and you know, I was asking the Lord this, and and He spoke to me. And they're like, wait, 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 God spoke to you. So I'm like, uh, yes. And and someone's saying, is He talking to you now? So I said, no. They they didn't understand. They couldn't understand that God could actually speak to people. But you know, just a little bit of knowledge of the New Testament. Uh, this should be clear because we we hear that Jesus himself says in John 10 verse 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me so Jesus speaks to his own sheep his people you know Jesus is sometimes uh, given this picture this image of being a shepherd leading his people and we'll see that in a moment in Psalm 95 which is interesting because it ties in with the verse that we've got here Today, if you hear his voice, what was it? If you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Spirit of God speaks to people. And um, he speaks to people. We read it in the New Testament. He speaks to Christians now. And uh, he speaks to all believers. And if God isn't speaking to you, and I'm not suggesting that it's an audible voice, but if God isn't communicating to you his will, well then, that should start alarm bells ringing saying, hey, am I really a Christian? Do I have spiritual life if God isn't speaking to me, if he isn't directing me and, and helping me and communicating what he wants to say to me? And uh, what's interesting as well is that the Bible reveals that God doesn't just speak to adults, he actually speaks to children as well. Remember in 1 Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 3, where the young Samuel is training with Eli the priest and it, it, it's sort of night time, they go to bed and and uh, Samuel hears a voice in the night so he thinks it's Eli the priest talking so he runs into Eli and he says, uh, he says here I am and sort of Eli's saying, well, what are you doing? I, I didn't call you he said, you know, go back to bed, go back to sleep so, so Samuel goes off to sleep and then a second time, he hears a voice, and so he runs into Eli, he says, Here I am, what did you want? And, uh, and Eli says, No, no, I didn't call you, I've not shouted you, just, just go back to bed. This happens three times. And then Eli, who seems a bit slow on the uptake, suddenly realises, Oh, actually, I think God might be speaking to him. You know, maybe God is speaking to this young boy. And so God can speak to children, speak to all kinds of people. And what's interesting is that God spoke to Samuel. The Bible records for us that he didn't even know the Lord at this time. you know. But he had a desire to know God. He wanted to know God. And that's it. If you want to know God, if you want to know the Lord, then I believe God can speak to you. He can communicate something of his will to you. He can let you know what it is that he wants. But the other thing is, I believe that God can also speak to the impenitent, to those who uh, don't love God, to those who don't believe in God, in fact, to those who reject God. Because we read in uh, John 16 and verse 8, uh, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, when he comes, when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment so God will speak to the unbelievers he will speak to those who who reject Jesus Christ those who, who mock and scorn the things of God he will speak to them as well to their hearts and he will reprove them for their sin 